OK, so I get many phone calls from friends and relatives saying they've got problems with their computer. And when I've asked them what have they done to try and remedy these problems, they tell me all they've done is they've shut the computer down, which is probably the most ineffective thing that they could do in the world ever. So what should you do instead? Well, this guide is going to tell you why you shouldn't ever shut your computer down. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So, as I say, I get phone calls from friends and relatives saying that they've got problems with their computers. And when I ask them what have they done to try and remedy the problem, the first thing they tell me is, I shut it down. I unplugged it from the mains, but it made no difference. Well, no, it wouldn't do because with Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, in fact, any modern system now, really shutting down isn't the answer, i.e. Have you switched it off and switched it on again? That is not the answer. What you really need to do is to restart your system. Now, why should you do that? And why is it better than a shutdown? Well, on modern day systems, we've got this new facility called Fast Startup. And what that means is when you shut your computer down, it doesn't actually shut everything down. It puts a lot of stuff to sleep, stuff like drivers, services, bits that sort of run in the background that help make your computer work. And what happens is, is when you shut your computer down, instead of actually shutting those services down, those things that work for you in the background that help you do things like print, like open emails, like open windows, they don't actually shut down. What they do is, like I say, they get put to sleep, they get frozen. So when they get frozen, all the errors get frozen with them. And then when you turn the computer back on, all it does is it just brings those errors back into play again. Now, obviously, you can't leave your computer switched on all the time. That just isn't energy efficient. It's going to burn it out. It's going to burn loads of energy and cost you loads of money. And when you're not using it, why leave it on? Why should you? Well, what I'm saying is if you do get a problem, the best thing to do is instead of shutting down, click on the start button, OK, and click on restart. Let the computer restart. That will shut down all the services, all the drivers. It won't lose any information. It will just shut them right down instead of freezing them, instead of sending them to sleep. Now, the computer will take longer to shut down and it will take longer to start up after doing a restart. That's because like I say, it's shutting everything right the way down and it's bringing it right the way back up again. And the chances are it may well solve that problem that you've been experiencing. It might not, but it's not going to hurt to give it a try. Now, what if you've decided you think to yourself, well, I'm, I I can't remember that. I can't remember. Or I've got a relative or a friend who can't remember to, sh to do a restart all the time. Now, I've got people they phone up, like I say, all the time. And I've told them several times, restart the computer. And then again, a week later, they'll phone up with another problem and I'll tell them to restart again. It becomes a bit of a chore. So what you can do is if you want to, you can turn off this fast start up. So all you do is click on the start button. You can do this in Windows 10 as well as Windows 11 and just type on your keyboard the word control. And then after a few seconds under best match, you should see control panel app. Move your mouse over that left click once and then if you've got this screen here go to power options if you've got this screen here then click on category just up there in the top right click on larger icons and then click on power options and then the next thing you want to do is you want to go to choose what the power buttons do just up there top left of this box left click once and then you can see there you've got turn on fast startup recommended and there's a tick beside it, but it's greyed out. If it's greyed out, then move your mouse over this here. Change settings that are currently unavailable. Left click once and then hopefully those little tick boxes should go blue. And what you want to do is you want to untick turn on fast startup recommended. Now, it's not recommended to do this by Microsoft, but like I say, if you've got somebody who keeps forgetting about the restart, then it's worth doing. So untick that box, click save changes. And what it's going to do is now is when you shut your computer down, it is actually going to shut everything right the way down. It's going to take longer to shut down and it's going to take longer to start up. 
but it's going to cleanly shut everything right the way down and bring it right the way back up again. So if I click on the start button now, click on shut down, and as you'll see now, shutting down will stay on the screen for longer than what it did before, and starting up will take longer than what it did before, as you can see already. So I've just turned my computer back on, and as you can see, the BIOS screen come up, and you've now got the Windows logo and the spinny circle. Now that spinny circle will probably stay there for a lot longer than what it normally does. And there we go, it's now booting up. Now, if, if you've got a solid state drive, then you probably won't notice much of a difference in the time it takes for it to load. But it's always worth keeping an eye on this setting because quite often when Windows does a large update, it tends to put it back on. So go back every once in a while, click on the start button, type in control, and then click on control panel, and then click on power options, and then just make sure that under choose what the power button does, there is no tick just to the left of turn on fast startup. Now, if you want to put fast startup back on, if it's taking too long to shut down and it's taking too long to start up, then you can go back to this change settings that are currently unavailable. Left click, put the tick back, click on save changes, click on the cross up there, and then we're back to as we was before, but unfortunately it's not shutting everything right the way down. Now common, the most common problem I get asked about is printing. The printer stops working and uh, when you uh, shut the computer down, what's happening is the driver state is being saved in the memory, i.e. the errors are being saved in the memory. The services, the printing services uh, state is also being saved in the memory, so therefore if it's not working, it's not going to be working again once you've started it up. But doing a restart, clicking the start button, clicking the power option there, the power logo, and then clicking restart will actually restart the printing services, the printer's drivers. And hopefully when the computer actually restarts back up again, then hopefully the printer will be working. And probably whatever you've tried to print will start coming out just as the computer's booting up like it is now. You'll probably see the printer's kicked into life and probably printed several hundreds of copies where you've tried printing several times and it's not worked. So like I say, that trick works for virtually any problem. So if a window doesn't come up, if a program doesn't load properly, even if your computer is starting to run slow, give it a restart. It freshens all of the drivers, all of the services up. I probably restart my computer a couple of times a week and I just shut it down every night as I normally would. And like I say, gives it a nice fresh cleanup of the memory, the drivers, and the services. Well, I hope this guide helped, and if it did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel. Or if you're looking for anything technology related, then have a look in the description down below. My Amazon store is down there, along with links for VPNs, Fire Sticks, Fire TV Cubes, Fire Stick accessories. Donating, buying, or subscribing using these links really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time into research and bringing you these videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some more time and money.